Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Electrolytic Capacitor Lifetime and Ripple Current. I'd like to thank Evgeny for his assistance in the preparation of this presentation. I'm going to use the TDK Aluminum Electrolytic Capacitor as a demo just to demonstrate the point or the equation and the derivation that I'm going to do. This is just an example, so there is a disclaimer here that this is just for educational purposes, there is no endorsement or recommendation implied, and that other companies are making similar capacitors. So this is just an example. Now in datasheet you find statements like very high ripple current, useful life uh, at uh, 125 degree, and many times you like to know the combination of this, that is for a given temperature, how much ripple current can you pass, or for a given ripple current at a given temperature, what will be the lifetime, and this is the subject matter of this presentation. Now let me start off with the basic data of this uh, capacitor family. We have here the capacitance, dimension of the case, which I'm not interested in. There is an ESR, which I'm not going to discuss, except to say that the ESR here of this uh, family is low. This is why it can get high current. And then we have three columns of current. This one is called IACR, R I guess for reference. This is with sleeve and this is without sleeve and they have two models uh, with a plastic sleeve and the current are a little bit different. This is because the thermal resistance is different. And then they have this IAC max. Okay, so we have this column here, this one here. Now notice that in this case, this is the ambient temperature, okay, ambient temperature. Here, this is the case temperature. Very big difference, very big difference. And also, notice there is a note here. Actually, there is a note here regarding the ESR, which I'm not interested in. But here is a note, and it's very important to read notes. Some important information is in the notes. So what it says here, is that the ripple current at fixed capacitor case temperature measured at aluminum case surface when mounted to a heatsink. In case of a soldering star with all the negative pins connected in parallel. Well, the last one, last sentence is not that important, but what is important here is that this information is for the case temperature of 125 degrees and then if uh, you need a heat sink and uh, this is not uh, very convenient and it's very complicated to accomplish so i'm going to concentrate on this data although all the results are also relevant to this but i'll just take this as an example so we have here the current which is the reference current 125 degree and here are the currents that you can get for the different capacitor and I guess this is for 4,000 hour lifetime. Doesn't say specifically here, but this is what is actually implied. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But then of course the question is what if you need more lifetime or another temperature? And this is the discussion we're going to carry later on. Now here is actually summarizing all the data that you would need and what we see here is lifetime curves this is in this case the case temperature and here is a normalized current now i'm not going to deal with this case of uh, case temperature so let's have a look at this one which is the ambient temperature They're very similar again all the results also are relevant to the case temperature, but I'd rather talk about something which is more practical, okay? So, what we see here is the following. These are curves of lifetime, okay? 2,000 hours up to 200,000 hours. This is the ambient temperature. This is a normalized current. It is normalized to this reference current that we have seen earlier, okay? It's normalized to this, either with sleeve or without sleeve, so it will be relevant for each family, but then you have to use the correct number, okay, then for the correct uh, capacitance, of course. 
So this is the normalized current and this is the ambient temperature and this is the lifetime and actually you can get uh, just about everything that you need but the purpose of this presentation is to see the underlying theory that leads to these curves okay this is the purpose of this presentation so the first question that one would ask is the following okay if i know what is the lifetime at the given temperature what would be the lifetime at another temperature given the same operating condition okay same current so in this case we can use this which is sort of an experimental equation that's been used in the industry for a long time which says the following the lifetime at a given temperature is equal to the lifetime of a reference temperature and this is the reference temperature minus the temperature that you are interested in divided by 10 okay this is 2 to the power of this again this is the temperature that you like to work at and this is the lifetime you are looking for this is the lifetime at a given temperature a reference temperature and this is this reference temperature which means by the way that if this difference is say 10 okay then the ratio is either times 2 or divide by 2 depending whether it's plus or minus 10 which means that for e every 10 degrees if you increase the temperature the lifetime will decrease by 2 and if you reduce the temperature by 10 the lifetime will increase by 2 okay so very interesting you can see it actually here I'm not going to show it you can very clearly see it here so now I'm posing the following question suppose I know a given reference point here the lifetime is 10,000 hours and the temperature is 130 degrees by the way I could have chosen this point it'll be the same thing but uh, I'd prefer this is easier to look at here because of the scale okay so this is will be my reference temperature and reference lifetime 10,000 hours and now I'm asking what will be the lifetime at 96 degree which is here okay now this curve shows it's 100,000 hours but I'm going to calculate it okay so I'm going to use this equation. So the reference is 130. Here it is. It's the reference temperature. The reference lifetime is 10K. I'm looking for 96 degrees, 96. So this is the equation and I'm getting 105,000 hours. While here it's 100,000 which is a pretty good match considering the difficulty of eyeballing the numbers here notice that the relationship between temperature and lifetime holds anywhere you see that this distance here is exactly as this distance here for these two lifetimes okay so this is kind of a universal equation now i'm coming to the second issue which is very important very practical question and that is the following if I like to work, say, at a given temperature, say 70 degree, how much current can I pass at 70 degree and get 20,000 hour lifetime? Okay, this is a very practical question. Now, you can get this, uh, this answer from this curve, of course, because if you look at 20,000 hour, you go up here, you go to 70 degree, this is the current you can, this is a normalized current uh, that you can get. But again, I like to develop the theory behind this relationship. This is the purpose of this presentation. Okay, so let's understand what is actually causing this curve, this curvature here, and what is behind it. So, if we have a capacitor which is heating up, there is the so-called hot spot within it. This hot spot temperature determines the lifetime okay so if you have a high temperature the lifetime would be short and if the hotspot temperature goes low 
then you can have a longer lifetime. And the equation of the relationship is here. This is the relationship. So if we have a system in which we have the capacitor, it has an internal thermal resistance. There is a thermal resistance between the case and the ambient. I can represent this as an electrical circuit in which the current source represents the power, the resistance is the thermal resistance, and the voltage is actually the temperature. This is the classical representation of a thermal conduction. So power is current, resist thermal resistance is resistance, and temperature and voltage is temperature. Okay? So now Let's have a look at this case in which we have some power and this power is due to the current, the ripple current squared times the ESR. And as we've said, hotspot temperature is determining the lifetime. So now this calculation is for a given lifetime, okay? So I'm assuming a given lifetime and I'm checking what will be the current at a given temperature for this lifetime. So I can write that the hotspot temperature is the ambient temperature plus the drop here, okay, which is the power times the total thermal resistance. And instead of power, I can write this value here, and this is the total resistance. Now I'm looking at two cases. One is again the reference case. This is the reference case in which we have some reference current and reference temperature. And then for the case that I'm interested in, the temperature I'm interested in, and the current that I like to calculate for this particular temperature. And this is all for the same lifetime. So now dividing these two, this drops, and then I can take the square root here, and here is what I'm getting. I'm getting that this normalized current is equal to this ratio. This is the hotspot temperature for the given lifetime that I'm interested in. This is the temperature I'm interested in. Again, this is the hotspot. And this is the reference temperature. Now, the hotspot temperature for the given lifetime is actually on this line here because this is zero current. If there is zero current, there is no temperature drop here. So the hotspot is equal to the ambient temperature. So in this case here, all these points here are actually the hotspot temperature for the given lifetime. That is for 10,000 hour, it's 130 degree. This is the hotspot. So I know this one. And now I'm picking any particular point as a reference that I want. And for convenience, I'm going to use this ratio of 1, which we have the number for it in the table. I'm interested in 10,000 hours. So this is what I'm interested in. And I'm asking what is the current at 100 degrees. Now, obviously, you can see it from here, okay? from this curve, but I'm going to calculate it. So I know 10,000 hour, I know the hotspot for 10,000 hour. Here is the hotspot, 130 degree, and I'm looking for the current that I can pass at 100 degree. So I'm plugging these numbers into this equation. This I know, and I know everything here. So I'm now plugging the numbers into this equation. I know this. I know what is the temperature that I'm interested in. The reference temperature is for one that I've chosen is here, is 112. So I'm plugging the numbers here and I'm getting 1.29. Now if I look at this curve, for 100 degree, for 10,000 hour, I indeed get 1.29. So this equation really represents what is going on or the other way around. Uh, these plots are actually uh, showing this equation. Now I got 1.29 as the ratio since the actual reference
current here from the table says uh, 9.8 depending on the capacitor of course then I find that the actual current that I can pass at 100 degrees for 10,000 hours is 12.6. So what I've shown here is two equations. This is the lifetime at a given temperature given the lifetime at another temperature, same condition. And this is the current ratio at a given temperature given the information on a reference temperature. Now Kemet shows this, this lifetime equation in this way. 10 to the power of one, say, this is a, for a particular capacitor, 125 minus T over 33, as opposed to this equation. But 10 is 2 to the power of 3.3. So if you put instead of 10 to the power of 3.3, you get here 10. So this equation and this equation are exactly the same. I don't know why Kemet is using 10 to the power with 33, it is very common to use this form of the equation. Obviously, the two equations are exactly the same. The second equation that I've developed here is the current for a given temperature, knowing the current at a reference temperature for the same lifetime. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.